So first things first, I picked out a uh, poplar piece of wood. Uh, why poplar you may ask? I think it's great for CNC. Uh, and it's not really the greatest looking wood out there. But for this type of jobs, the ones that you're gonna paint or stain, uh, it doesn't really matter uh, how the wood looks. At the end, it's just gonna be covered with paint. So yeah, the next step is to secure it to the CNC. Before uh, you run your job on your CNC, you have to absolutely make sure that the uh, project that you're gonna be working on, the piece of wood that you're gonna be machining is properly secured. Uh, the way I've been doing it is using painter tape and super glue. It usually takes a few minutes for the glue to cure, but that's okay. Uh, I'm not in a hurry. Uh, if you're gonna be doing this type of job for like, a, you know, a business or something like that, you may want to invest in one of those activators that make it faster for the glue to cure, but I don't really need it. Uh, you may be wondering, uh, where did you get the design for this map? So usually people go to Flash Terrain and set up, you know, an area and then create an STL files from there. But for this specific job, I just went to Thingiverse and just typed, as you can see here, like 3D world map. And I was able to find what I was looking for. I usually like to quickly search if what I'm looking for already exists. If not, then I try to figure out a way to create it myself. Okay, next is autoprobing. Uh, I'm doing autoprobing on my CNC using the CNC uh, Labs uh, Dutch plate. <laughs> uh, so it's a company uh, from uh, Canada uh, where I bought my uh, CNC from, and they have this awesome Dutch plate that you they can do autoprobing for you. Uh, I like to take different angles. Uh, I really love uh, watching <laughs> the, the CNC doing its job. I've had it for about a year now and I've run out of uh, many jobs but every time I, I run a job I really like to just watch it do its thing. Okay so before we get to painting I usually always apply a pre-stain to the wood I'm working with. Uh, this usually helps the paint go on smoothly and look really nice at the end. Uh, believe me uh, if, if you're gonna do uh, staining or painting on, on any type of wood it's really uh, good idea to not skip this step. Now for the fun part, painting. I really love painting uh, my projects either if it's a 3D printed model, wood, or, you know, or anything else that you know require <laughs> to add paint to it. Uh, it's very common for me, I don't know why. I'm just getting a groove, I listen to some music and have a drink and just, you know, start you know, going. So yeah, I'm gonna, you know, as you can see in the video, you're gonna see me painting the ocean, um, trying to put a little bit of detail to the type of uh, the type of colors uh, the water that the ocean water has. Like you know, sometimes it's light around the continent or islands, uh, and as you go deeper into the ocean, it gets a little darker. So I was trying to capture that. Uh, Try to paint the mountains. Uh, you know, like with like some uh, snow or ice on top of them, um, and of course the sand in the Sahara Desert. So yeah, I try to uh, capture all the little details to make the uh, map pop. So next up will be the resin part. We'll get to it in a little bit. Right. So adding resin. I am not an expert with resin. Uh, this is my first successful job using resin. I've tried resin like about a year ago and I felt miserably. Uh, I didn't follow the instructions on how to use the resin that I bought uh, and I just felt like it, at one job it didn't even cure, the resin didn't even cure, the other one it just came out very easy. So I just gave up um, up until this project and I decided to pick it up again. At uh, first I was gonna cover the whole map with resin, basically submerge the whole thing and I wanted to do it layer by layer. Uh, as I was adding the layers, I noticed that I kinda liked it when I got like almost halfway through it and I just decided to not cover it, to just keep it the way it is. It just gave it, uh, uh, how to say it, it just gave it that kind of map look to it instead of just being like a blocky of resin, right? 
so once the epoxy is set, uh, uh, waiting for it until it's cured, um, I decided to just cut the wood pieces on the table saw to remove any excess and unnecessary part uh, and make it as clean uh, and sleek as possible. I decided to paint the edges on the board blue to match the ocean. It's a small detail, but uh, it really ties the whole piece together. Finally, I'm adding a 3D printed hanger that I 3D printed on my uh, Neptune 3 Max, I think. Uh, no, Neptune 3 Plus. Uh, this is the first time I'm using it uh, on a project, and I'm gonna make a, <laughs> a little boo boo pretty soon, as you're gonna see in the. Uh, as, as you're gonna see in a little bit. This will let us hang it flat on the wall, uh, you know, making it uh, a perfect display piece. So as you can see here, I <laughs> put the hanger upside down. Usually it has to go the other way. Here it is, it is finished. The 3D world map is hanging on the wall. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, let me know in the comment if you like it. Um, uh, and please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe uh, for more awesome projects like the one you've been watching. Thank you and I'll see you on the next one.